Hello guys, welcome to camera tricks in 12 minutes. Today we're going to have a look at some camera tricks. So we'll have a look at multiple cameras, embedded cameras, render textures, viewports, security cameras, and layers. As you can see, you get a good few things to look at. So again, it's going to be about 12 minutes and some very practical tips that you can use directly into your project. So let's get started. So first, what we have is we create a, basically a very simple uh, environment. So we create a cube. This cube will serve to create um, the, the actual floor for our environment. So again, we will create this cube, possibly rename it. So we're going to rename it ground. Again, you can use a right click for that. And once this is done, we're going to rescale it on the X and Z axis, about 100. Okay. So again, we have a nice little box. And what we have to do now is just to add a bit of texture. So again, there are a good few ways to do that. You could actually import the texture if you wanted to. Uh, but to do so, what we can create is just a material. So before that, I'm just pointing out the camera here. And I will make sure this camera is pointing downwards. So again, I'm going to put it at the position 0, 0, 0 and flip it around 90, uh, the, put it, 90 degrees around the X axis. You can see it as I can, as I'm moving along, you can actually display the actual camera, the actual plane. So then we just create a brand new material, again from create material. We're gonna create this material and rename it green. Again, you can change the main color using the inspector window. So again, if I click on this particular rectangle, I will have a green color. So it's very simple. We could do the same to create a red color, a blue color, whatever color that you need. Okay, so that's done. And the only thing I need to do now is to take this brand new material and drag it and drop it onto the floor or the ground. So that's it, the ground is green. So at this stage, I've got a ground, which is fantastic. And there are a few more elements that I will need to use. And one of them is a character controller. So what I do is I just will import the characters. Okay, so again, it's an asset, it's a built-in asset. And what we see is that uh, after a few seconds, it should create a brand new folder. So again, after importing the packages, you can click on import right now. It will create a brand new folder inside the standard assets. So again, I go to standard assets. And then inside standard assets, I will actually find a folder for both third and first person controller. In our case, we will use the first person controller. So again, using the prefab folder, I've got something called first or FPS controller. So again, just drag and drop it. So again, we're just setting up an environment in which we can then apply a different camera effect. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing here is to disable the main camera that is looking downwards because I already have a camera on the first person controller. Okay, so again, as I move along here, you might not see that properly, but again, I'm progressing. Okay, I'm moving up and down, and I am actually managing to progress through the environment. So the next thing that I could create here is another box. Again, this box is just easier um, for our environment because if I put this box on the environment, we'll be able to see it and we're about to actually just uh, witness that they are actually moving from left to right. Okay, so here we can see that the box can get in closer to the box and we can rotate around the box. Oh, so this is working, all right? So again, we're using the camera that is included on the first person controller. So once this is done, there are a few more things we could do. So what I'm doing now, I'm duplicating this box, so four times, so again, you can use the Control D if you use a Windows machine or Apple D if you use an Apple machine. Okay, so I'm duplicating these boxes. And then I will create another camera. Okay, so I could have used the one that I had before, in fairness, but uh, for this, I'm going to create a brand new camera. So again, I'm going to call it from above. It's called camera that will actually look at the scene from above. I'm going to flip it around the X axis by 90 degrees. And again, making sure that the uh, Y coordinate is high enough so that the view from this camera can be captured and can capture all the different boxes. Okay, you can see it in the bottom right corner of the scene view. What I'm doing as well here, I'm just changing the width and height of the actual area on screen for this camera. So again, it's gonna be taking about a quarter of the screen. Okay, 
So the only thing is it should be sh it should be displayed on top of the other view, and we need to change the depth. Okay, the depth basically of one means that the view from this camera will be displayed atop on top of the existing view. Okay, because the existing view has a, has a depth of zero, this camera will be actually displayed, or the view from this camera will be displayed on top. Okay, so again it works perfectly. Now again, this camera is quite static. Okay, so wherever I go, it just displays a camera from a, a view from above. But uh, what I could do is possibly put this camera um, within the first person controller, which means that this camera will be moving with my first person controller. I then need to change the coordinates. So again, we're using zero and zero for the X and Z. So again, the position here is relative to the parent. And since the parent here is the first person controller, it means that the X and Z are the same as for the, the first person controller, but the Y view is different. And you can see here at the bottom left, in the bottom left corner, that this camera is moving with me. Okay? So it's just showing me whatever is around me, but from an above view. So it's pretty simple at this stage. Something else I'd like to show you as well is the idea to be able to, to, be, able to be able to be selective whenever we display elements on the camera. Okay, so again, we're going to use the concept of layers. So what I will do is create a brand new material, and this material will be red. Okay, so again, same as before, we're going to choose a red color, and drag and drop it on one of the brand new uh, cubes. Okay, so again, the cubes has been duplicated, we move it, and once this has been done, I can apply the red uh, color. So when this is done, I can duplicate this box four times. So again, Apple D or Control D. So duplicate this box several times. Okay, so we're going to place the duplicate um, a few meters apart. Fantastic, that's done. And now what I want is to create what is called the layer. So layer basically is just to make sure that all of those objects will be displayed on the same layer. So it will be, it will make it possible to actually. Um, display them on a specific camera, for instance. So again, I'm going to give the same name to all these cubes. We can do that with Unity by selecting all of these cubes and give it uh, a name in the inspector window. So again, if I do a search on the red cube, you can see that only the red cubes are now, uh, you can actually see only the red cube on the screen. So once this is done, the next thing we need to do is to create what is called a layer. So again, I just want to demonstrate those cubes appear properly. If I press the play button here, we can use, you can see on the top camera, you can see both the red cubes and the white cubes. So again, here we haven't been, we, we have not been selective yet. Okay, so we can see all the different cubes. So what I'll do is I will look at layers. Okay, so again, I'm gonna add a brand new layer. Okay. So a layer is basically something that uh, is used to group objects to be displayed uh, in the same camera, for instance. So again, here I'm going to call this layer uh, minimap, okay, because we're going to display elements on this layer uh, through a minimap. So again, here I'm going to select all these objects and apply the minimap layer. So again, what I'm saying is that all these cubes are on the layer called minimap. The next thing I need to do is to say that my camera will display only the object which are on the layer called minimap. So in this example here, I'm going to click nothing first to just display nothing and then select minimap. So this camera should only display objects that are on the minimap layer, and in our case, it should be the red boxes. So if you, if I play the scene, you should see that, that my camera, the top bottom left, only displays the red boxes, not the white ones. It's because the white boxes are not on the minimap uh, layer, only the red boxes are. So that's, that's about it. So again, so far we have seen a good few tricks, very interesting tricks with the layers, okay? And uh, again, <clears throat> one of the next thing we could do is to change uh, a few options in the camera. So at the moment, if you see the camera in the bottom left corner of the scene, has kind of a black or brown rectangle. So again, if I change the option of clear flux to uh, just depth, uh, depth only, then basically this rectangle should disappear and only the object will be displayed. So again, it's just a way to display it a little bit better. It's just a bit neater uh, to do. Okay, so you have different options, but this is one of them and it works pretty well. Okay, so again, 
make sure to specify the layer. So at this stage, this is working pretty well. And again, uh, what I'm doing here, I'm looking at the clipping planes. The clipping planes are indicating basically when you should display objects. In our case, you just don't display objects that are further than the, the parameter called far. So if I put 10 meters here, any object that is further than 10 meters away will not be displayed. So it's great because it actually makes it possible to save a bit of performance or just to get your game to be a bit more performant. In other words, you will not be rendering objects that are uh, not within a radius of 10 meters. Okay, so again, if you have a lot of objects in your scene, it's quite interesting to actually use this clipping uh, property so that you display only the object that actually quite close to you. Okay, so at this stage, we have played with the clipping um, um, options. What I will do right now is to create a brand new camera. Okay, so again, I'm going to call this camera, uh, let's say, screen. Okay. And what I want to do right now is to create what is called, um, I suppose, a dynamic texture. So what we will be doing is taking the output from a camera and then the image captured by, by a particular camera, I will actually display it on a specific object. Okay, so again, I'm going to create what is called a render texture and give it a name. Okay. So when this is done, I'm going to call it display text on screen, which is pretty simple. Okay. And again, when this is done, what I need to do is link it to my camera. Okay. So again, I'm going to go back to my camera and look at the option called target texture. So what I'm saying is that the image rendered by the camera will be displayed on this particular texture. Okay. And this texture is called display uh, text on screen. So the last thing I need to do is to create a brand new object. So again, to display this image. So again, I'm going to use a quad. It works pretty well with a quad, which is a, a very thin, uh, uh, suppose an object with a, a very uh, low depth. Okay. And again, this is it here. Uh, I might just rescale it slightly on the X and Z axis, but the rest should be pretty much okay. So again, move it up a bit and then just rescale it okay, using the scale option uh, in the inspector. I can also do that using uh, the arms or the, uh, the the keyboard. So once this is done, basically the only thing I need to do is to apply my texture to this quad. Okay. So again, after a few adjustments, I should be able to take my texture, which is present in the assets folder, and drag and drop it on this particular object. And after that, we should be pretty much okay to go. So again, here I'm just dragging and dropping this particular texture on the actual quad. So again, we take the output from a camera to a texture and we put this texture on the particular object. So let's play the scene to see how it works and if it works. So again, as I'm moving around, you can see that if I look at this particular texture here, exactly, it's rendering the view from one of the cameras, which is pretty cool. Okay, so again, it works very well. What you could do is now the view that I've rendered on this box is actually uh, pretty much static. What you could do is use a different camera. So maybe the camera that is actually um, from the first person controller and try to display or to capture this texture and to display it onto um, the actual texture. So again, it's quite nice, especially if you want to implement security cameras, the idea that you have on a screen and this screen will display the image capture by a specific camera. Okay, so that's about it, guys. Again, that was a very short tutorial, okay, about 12 minutes or so. So again, if you want more Unity tutorials, you can go on learntocreategames.com. And I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. And again, I'll see you on next Thursday for more information about Unity. See you. Bye.